Hey everyone, what is up? Welcome back to the channel and welcome to my series here. It is the Windows Interface, Windows Basic Series. And I know that some of you might be thinking, Sam, come on, really? Windows Basics? Like, we all know this. But the fact is, most of my viewers probably do know this, but there are some that do not know the basics, actually, and that do need um, refreshers, even if uh, they did know the basics at one time. I definitely know a handful of those people, and that's kind of why I made this. So if it's easy for you and you don't need it, I get it. Feel free to pass it on, or maybe stick around. You never know. Maybe there is something that you haven't seen that you don't know. But either way, guys, that's what this is going to be. Okay, now if you decided to stick around and not move on uh, because, you know, you're an elite user, um, thank you. I appreciate you hanging on here. So let's start with a brief Windows history here. Um, so Windows didn't exist until after MS-DOS existed. Now, Microsoft came out with MS-DOS, I believe, in 1981, and you are basically looking at it here. This is just a command prompt that gets you DOS prompt, or even now it's just called a command prompt. But back in the day, in 1981, and, uh, you know, those years surrounding that, this, when you booted up your computer, this is what you saw. You got a C prompt, or sometimes, depending on the age of your computer, you actually got an A prompt if you booted off of a floppy. And so back in the day, you actually had to run your computer like this. You had to run such commands like dir for directory, see what's in these directories, and then, you know, do a cd backslash to get into these different directories and run programs from there. Um, so after this and after DOS was around for a few years, Microsoft realized that users like to... They like to see visual stuff. They like to see graphical stuff because you got a little bit of that when you ran different programs. So at that point, they came up with Windows and it was developed, it was pretty much named as a reference to a window into your system. So like it was kind of giving the impression that, win that users can now see into their system through Windows. And so that's kind of how the name came about. Um, and it uh, just stemmed off of MS-DOS. Okay, let's go ahead and get this closed up here, and we'll probably revisit that at some point. So now I want to start with the basics of Windows, or Windows Basics. So we're going to start with uh, the desktop. Um, this whole thing you see here when you boot up your computer and log in, the whole little top that you see here is your desktop. Now, the desktop is a graphical user interface that really serves as your main workspace on your Windows operating system. Like I said, it's what you the first thing you see when you log in to Windows every morning. Now, the Windows desktop here has a lot of really key elements to it, and I'm going to point those out to you here. Now, the first thing that you're going to see, you guys won't all have these here, but most of you will have probably the recycle bin here. And we're going to start with pointing out the one of the key elements called icons. Now, icons represent files, folders, programs, shortcuts to programs or files, stuff like that. And generally, you just double click on them to open those up. Like if I were to double click on Edge here, it opens on your desktop. And it's kind of your workspace. Like I said, I want to, I want you guys to think of this kind of like, kind of like your desk at home. If you are paying bills or, you know, doing taxes or whatever the case is on your desktop, you probably have some files out some paper files. You probably got some folders that you keep things in. And Windows is kind of the same way here. This whole place is your workspace, but in a virtual environment. So just kind of think of it as that. So we looked at the icons. Um, one thing that you can um, do with your Windows desktop, you can also, it, it technically is a 
temporary storage place to work off of your desktop, then move those files elsewhere. And we'll get to that in our, uh, in our next episode when we talk about um, organization and file structure, stuff like that. All right, let's move on. So we talked about icons. And if we look down here, you have this here. This is called your taskbar down here. Now your taskbar is typically located, if you're on Windows 11, I don't believe you can move it anywhere else. But other versions of Windows, you've been able to drag and drop to the left, to the right, and even up top. Not something I was ever into. I like it at the bottom. But your taskbar, which is usually located down here, it contains different things here um, that I'm going to point out. So in Windows 11 over here, you got your widgets, weather, stuff like that. If you just hover over that, you get all this stuff pop up. Um, it's not something I use. It's fun and informative, but generally in my operating systems, I disable that. Um, so then we have, we'll just go to, um, we'll just go across the board here. You've got your start button and your start button opens what's called the start menu. And in your start menu, these will have, again, Windows 11 looks a lot different than Windows 10, but it's kind of the same idea, same concept here. Once you get into the start menu, you've got some icons of pinned apps and shortcuts of pinned apps. You can manipulate this and move this by the arrows here, kind of go down, see what's down there. Um, the great thing is this is all customizable, so you can remove this stuff too. And then you can put your own stuff in there, which I will probably show that to you in an upcoming video. Um, and then you can click here on all apps. And you can just kind of scroll through and see all of the apps also or programs that you have installed in the system. And up top, you also have your search bar. Now, this search bar up here, he goes right along with the next search bar that I was going to show you, which is on the task bar. So if you click that, it opens up a search. Now, say, for instance, we just want, um, let's say we want to search Edge. So you click search, type Edge. Now with Windows 11, it works a little bit different. Um, you gotta go here to each like tab. So like if you're looking for Edge the app, okay, you found it. If you're looking for documents that contain the word Edge, gotta go to documents. You wanna search Edge on the web and so on and so forth. Um, generally though, um, the app, if that's what you're looking for, will come right up in under all. Um, but this is a way to dwindle those down and just find exactly what you're looking for. So again, the search bar is the same as if you were to click start and use this search here. So there are other applications that you can use for search and stuff too. I've mentioned those in other videos. Um, so take a look at those. All right, moving on after the search bar here, we have the uh, pinned, I call these pinned icons. Um, so like say for instance, I've already got Google Edge pinned. Let's unpin that. I'll show you how this works. Say, for instance, you got Microsoft Edge here and you want it pinned to this area. All you do is right click it. And again, mind you, this is in Windows 11. I'm going to right click it. We're going to go to show more options because of this new context menu Windows 11 has that I don't like. And then you are going to go to, uh, well, it's already pinned to start, but we're going to pin to taskbar. And as you see, it is right there, no problem. Now, the cool thing about this too is, let's say we have Edge open, but we have it minimized. If you look down here, you can see this little underline under the Edge icon. That little underline means that that program is open and it's just minimized. So furthermore, even if you hover over it, you can kind of see what's going on there. Like, oh yeah, that's the tab that I had open for you know, whatever the case is. Um, so that explains this little area, which I called the pinned icons, but um, it's also uh, good for just keeping kind of like shortcuts there. I recommend that anything you use often, go ahead and pin it to here. That way you can open it fairly quickly. All right, now the next thing over here, moving on, um, this is called the system tray. Now the system tray, uh, this area usually located at the right of the taskbar, depending on where your taskbar is, but with Windows 11, it's there. Uh, the system tray holds icons for systems and programs and features that run in the background. 
So if you look here, OneDrive is running in the background. If we hit the arrow, it kind of shows us everything that's kind of running in the background. Uh, there's green shot, screen capture, Windows Defender, NVIDIA stuff, and so forth. Um, the great thing is if you don't want one of these uh, to be running, you just right click it and you can choose its exit option. Go away, green shot. And so if you don't need them to run, go ahead and close them down. And so that's what this area is here, is your system tray. And then over to here, you've got the date and time. And this looks a little bit different in Windows 11 versus Windows 10. Used to, I believe it used to only just time here. Um, and now if you click it, you actually suggested focus time and say, hey, leave me alone until you know, this 30 minutes is up. And there's just kind of a lot to that. Your whole notification there. But you can also in settings go and put seconds on this time clock. And then over here is the Windows Copilot. I believe that's in beta. Um, we're not going to bother with that because I didn't. Config this machine uh, the way I want it because I've done literally nothing with this. Okay, guys, so back to the desktop itself, you see this nice little graphical image back here. That is called your desktop background or frequently referred to as wallpaper. So this is basically a customizable image um, or you can even do solid colors that appears behind your desktop icons. So if you look, if I drag this icon down here, you can see that that image is behind the icons. Um, so it's just kind of a neat little interface to look at or a picture to look at while you're working kind of equivalent to having a picture of your family or a nice scenery on your desktop at work something like that so um, if we go back to icons here i want to point something out um, now if you look at these icons closely you see this little arrow here what that arrow means is that these are shortcuts and these are icons that represent links to programs, files, folders, or even websites, actually. Um, that you can put them anywhere on the desktop that you want. Just, you know, set them wherever. I like to have things nice and neat and centered or, you know, at least lined up in some way, shape, or form. But you can put these wherever you want on the desktop. And again, that little arrow means shortcut. So the difference is... What that means, a shortcut, is means this just points to a program that you can run. Instead of, let's say, for instance, we right click here and we create new text document and we'll just name it test and hit enter. Now, on this icon, you see there is no shortcut because this is not a shortcut to this file. This file actually exists on your desktop. In fact, if you open up File Explorer, which we will cover in the next episode, but this is just to show you, desktop does show as a location on your computer. And what you see here is what you see here, minus recycle bin, of course. Uh, but yeah, so the test file I just made actually lives on the desktop. It's not a shortcut. Now, if I were to, let's say, have this in a different folder somewhere else on my drive, I could put a shortcut to that, and that doesn't necessarily mean it's there. In fact, I've seen people mess this up where, you know, they back up their shortcuts, but they don't back up the actual source of the file, and all they're left with is a shortcut, and it doesn't give them the data that they need. So keep that in mind. Again, we will go over that in the next episode, and I'm just going to delete that, right-click, and delete. Still getting used to that Windows 11 context mode. Um, after that, we have um, the recycle bin. It's kind of the last thing to show you here. Now, the recycle bin is just an icon, which is almost always on the desktop that holds deleted files until you go in and permanently remove them. Um, so you can double click on it. And as you see, that file I just deleted, test is there. Now you can do a couple things. You can right click on it and you can empty the recycle bin which means you're going to completely wipe this file out. Or if you accidentally deleted the file, you can undo delete. Or you can actually just grab it and drag it out to the desktop or wherever you want it as well. I'm just going to right click 
and I'm going to delete. And so that's basically all the recycle bin does. It's kind of like a safeguard. If you delete files, they're not fully deleted. You can go into recycle bin and grab them. Anyway, guys, that is it for part one of Windows Basics. Um, the next one about organization and file structure is coming up. If this helped you out at all, make sure you click that like button and consider subscribing so you don't miss the other videos coming up on the Windows. Thanks, guys.